Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. So I've got in my hand the Moto Z. Now, Tim and I have published our official reviews of Moto Z, Moto Z Force. So if you want to learn anything about these that you haven't learned already, go check those out. I will put those links down below. Uh, but now that the phone is on the verge of hitting retail stores and you're probably considering purchasing one, we want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting into. And should you go ahead and buy one, we want to let you know the first 10 things you should do with the Moto Z. So with the Moto Z, you've got one of the first Motorola phones that does indeed have a fingerprint reader. So you may as well set it up. We, you know, we talk about this a lot, and I'm sure you, some of you are sick of, sick of hearing this, but the fingerprint reader, it just makes sense to use. It secures your phone so that only you can essentially unlock it. Um, but it also gives you uh, some convenience in terms of not only being secure, but unlocking your phone, especially in this case, without ever having to touch a button. So what I mean is the fingerprint reader here is a capacitive style button. So all you need to do in order to activate it is just put your finger over it. There's no click in, there's no swipe, there's nothing else. You just have to put your finger over it. Now, not only that, but Motorola also added this feature where you can put your finger back over it and that will lock your phone. So it's just one of those things you should use and to, to set it up, you just go into settings and you look for security. And then in here, you'll see fingerprint setup. You walk through the process and you can add fingers. Now you can see I have four that like I do with all these, I put both thumbs, both index fingers. So index fingers come in handy when it's lying down on a table. The thumbs come in handy when you pick it up with either hand. So you can set up a ton of different fingers, uh, but it's just one of those things you should do because again, security and some convenience in there as well. Uh, so for the second thing is when you first boot up this phone, now we're talking about the Moto Z Droid and Moto Z Force Droid, which are Verizon exclusives. For whatever reason, Verizon keeps making Motorola put on Launcher 3 is what it's called. And we're talking about the launcher that you launch your apps and all that stuff. And so Launcher 3, I don't know why they're doing this instead of the Google Now Launcher, because every other Motorola device not involved in, with Verizon has the Google Now Launcher. But I would suggest installing something else. So what I'm talking about is if we go into settings and the first time you boot up your phone and use it, um, when you go to your home screen, you'll have this right here. You'll see that Launcher 3. So Launcher 3 is fine. There's just no extra features in there. So if you have Launcher 3 up, you can see you can set it up and you have this sort of charcoaly um, transparent app drawer, but you can't swipe over to get to Google Now. And so you sort of miss some of that functionality. Um, if you just install the Google Now Launcher, which is free, that gets you out of that and just gets you some added features which should have been there anyway and for again whatever reason verizon is making uh motorola do this so anyway that's number two i would just say put on a new launcher that actually has some features in there now the next thing is going to be moto display which has for years been one of my favorite software features in all of android so if you know what i'm talking about it's when your phone is locked like this and you get a notification or wave your hand over it and you can have the, the device essentially light up just specific pixels since this is an AMOLED display show you the time date. And if you have notifications that have rolled in, it's, it's one of those things that is, I would call game changing in terms of software features because your phone's lying on a desk like that and you haven't touched it in a while, rather than seeing blinking lights and it notifying you with loud noises, you can just wave over it and check the time, date, and see if you have notifications. And then as those roll in, they will also just sort of light up and show you that they're there and actually give you information instead of asking you to instead of asking you to try to figure out what a blinking light stands for. Now, I tried to just send myself a message here and we'll see if that shows up so you can see. So right there, I just sent myself a message and Hangouts pops up and says, look, or Moto Display pops and says, look, you have a message. And so with that, I can touch on that. And it actually shows me messages. It shows I actually have a couple, one from Tim, one from myself. Now I can swipe up and that will actually launch into Hangouts and get me right in there so I can reply, whatever. Um, you can also swipe to the left or right and that'll just sort of put that all to sleep or you can even swipe down and dismiss. So what you can do with multiple notifications, say you have three or four or five on here, you can just swipe them all individually down and actually dismiss them. So then you wipe away your notifications. You can you know, obviously get back to that stuff later. So photo display, easily one of the best features introduced in a long time on any smartphone. So in order to control this wrong area there, you want to go into the Moto display, which we're going to hang out in for a bit. And you'll see the option right here under display. So if we tap on that, obviously you want to turn that to on. Now in here, you can go in and block apps that you don't want to ever show up on there. You can have it keep your screen dark during um, hours when you're potentially sleeping or something like that. 
Um, you can also ask it or tell it to uh, show what kinds of or levels of detail. Um, so yeah, Moto Display, make sure you're using this. It's just one of the best features I think ever created. Um, so there's some other stuff here, uh, but actually before we get into the Moto stuff, let's talk about camera for a second. So Motorola makes it really easy to get into the camera and they've done this also for years. So if you pick your phone up or pull it out of your pocket, you can do this wrist twist like that and it launches the camera. It's, it's not the fastest um, camera trick I've ever seen, but it's... Uh, but it's pretty darn fast and it just loads right up for you. So I would really suggest remembering that, figuring out the right twist to make sure you can get that. You never know when you might wanna launch and uh, pick up some pictures. Now you can also do another couple of things. So if you're on this screen, there's a camera shortcut down here and you can just swipe that and that will get you into your camera as well. Now there's a third way and this may be the best way yet. Um, and it's kind of in an odd spot, but if you go into your settings and your display settings, there is an option right here that says press power button twice for camera. So if you turn that on and you press the power button twice fairly fast, it will launch the camera. So like the, uh, like the, uh, the wrist twisting gesture, you can do this from anywhere. So I'm in Chrome, press that twice, camera is supposed to load up and didn't exactly do that there. There we go. So I would just suggest memorizing all three of those ways. So you got wrist twist, um, swipe up from here, and then you can actually program the power button to do that with a double tap. All right, so now we'll go back into the Moto app and talk about some of the other software features. Now, this has always been one of the big key selling points, I think, with Moto phones is this Moto suite. So we talked about display, um, but let's talk about other Moto actions. So all of that wrist twisting stuff, that's actually part of Moto actions. Now these are not all, but many of these are actually things that might come in handy and you just might want to figure out. So uh, the first one is approach for Moto display. Now that's the thing I just showed you where it's laying on a desk and you can just wave your hand over it. I would, I would honestly turn that on. Attentive display means that your screen stays on while you're looking at it. So if I'm just sitting here staring at it, not touching anything, my phone won't go to sleep. It'll constantly stay awake because it's I'm looking at it. Uh, chop twice for flashlight is an interesting one. So you just chop twice and that turns on your flash in the back to be a flashlight. And then you could just chop again and that will go off. So it, it's worth keeping on there unless you do running and hold your phone a lot. Sometimes you get some extra chops in there when you don't need them. Um, flip for do not disturb just means if you flip your phone over and put it on a desk, it will go into do not disturb mode. This might be handy instead of having to down press the volume or find a notification for it. Um, you can pick up your phone to have it from stop to have it stop from ringing if it's lying on a desk and ringing. Um, there's an option here called swipe to shrink, which is sort of interesting. So this phone is tall and wide. Um, if you swipe up here, it'll actually shrink that down. So you sort of get a better one handed mode where you can reach the notification area, touch things and all of that stuff. So, um, it may be something to consider leaving active just in case you need some one handed time. And then to get out of it, you just touch anywhere in the black. Um, the other thing then is twist for capture. And I just showed you that with the camera. So moto actions, definitely some stuff you'll want to pay attention to. All right. And finally, um, Moto Voice has always been um, one of the big features here where you can talk to your phone and have it do stuff. So for a lot of years, Google's been pushing the OK Google command. And so Motorola is essentially doing the same thing, um, except they let you customize the phrase. So mine is OK Moto Z. And then that pops up and it starts listening to what I want it to do. So you can do this from anywhere with this phone as long as you have it activated. And you get to program that, um, that command. And so if you go through here, there's actually the initial launch setup teaches you how to do that. And you have to record your voice and all this stuff and you can manage it. So you can change it if you want to tell it if you want it to talk to you and things like that. But it's, it's pretty much just access to Google's voice search. Um, you just get to customize the phrase. So you can say, okay, Moto Z, what's today's date? And then you could say, Okay, Moto Z, how old is LeBron James? Okay, Moto Z, what team does he play for? 
So you can see you can even you can even continue on with additional conversations like you can with the Google Voice search. So Moto Voice, it, it it really is just a custom launch phrase that gets you into sort of those Google Voice searches, but definitely worth worth looking into. All right, so the next thing is is especially again, this is geared towards the Verizon units, the Z Droid and Z4 Droid. They come with quite a bit of bloatware. So we always want to remind you that you can disable bloatware, bloatware being all the Verizon preloaded apps. So in order to get into this, you go into settings, apps, and then in here you'll find a whole bunch of um well you'll find three different options for listing out your apps here now you can see i've already gone through and disabled all the stuff i don't want um but like let's say verizon's cloud hasn't been disabled yet um and we'll go back and show you exactly where you can find this so you're in your list of apps and we'll find that verizon cloud somewhere there it is. So you would just tap on that, look for the disable button or uninstall if it's available. Most of these you can't uninstall, you can just disable them. Anyway, you disable that, it removes it from your app drawer, removes it from working, doing anything in the background, it just sort of sets it in the back in this sort of list of apps that are disabled. So it's just something to think about. These are apps you don't really need. They push Verizon services, which you don't need because Google has most of them in free versions or there's other apps that are free that do it or what have you. They're just not stuff that you necessarily need on your device. Uh, the next thing I would say is maybe consider tossing in a micro SD card. So the phone comes in either 32 gig or 64 gig storage options, but it also supports up to two terabytes of micro SD cards. So in the uh, box with your phone, you do have this little guy right here, which is a SIM eject tray. And the SIM slot is up here on the top. And the SIM slot also happens to double as your micro SD tray. So if we slide that out and we take a look at this, you can see I have a SIM in there, but right here you would also put a micro SD card and it actually says SD right there. So you just set it in there, slide this back in the top of the phone. If I can figure out which way it goes. I thought it was this way. There we go. And uh, it may ask you to reboot because you're removing and uh, putting back in a SIM, but otherwise that's basically how that works. Just an idea to give you um, some extended storage there. Uh, one thing though that is specific to Verizon that I will suggest taking a look at is advanced calling. So advanced calling, go into settings, tap on advanced calling and look for, well, if you're not, if you're not using HD voice or video calling, you can certainly turn those on. Um, if you're calling other Verizon people that also have that, you just get really crystal clear um, audio or option to voice call them within the actual dialer on the phone. Um, but I would definitely suggest activating Wi-Fi calling so that when you're at home or at work or whatever, and you want to place a call, even if you have a bad connection, it uses a Wi-Fi signal to do that. And so you can make calls over Wi-Fi. Again, this might be just specific to the Verizon Droid versions, but definitely worth a look. And then finally, because, well, this is a modular phone, apologies for all those, those fingerprints, it's time to decide, or you should at least consider if you want to pick up any of the Moto mods. Now we have more details on most of these um, in our full reviews, but basically you're looking at battery packs like this one here from Incipio, which has been branded with Tumi. It's also a Kate Spade one, which is again made by Incipio, but branded with Kate Spade, or there's just Incipio packs. One of the Incipio packs even has wireless charging built in, I believe. Uh, but basically you just slap these on, starts charging your phone, and uh, that's basically it. So there's these to consider. Um, pop that off for a second. Uh, this is a style shell, which will actually come with your phone, but Motorola and other companies, including Incipio, are just gonna sell other ones. So you'll see nylon and leather and things like that. And uh, you just slap those on and it gives your phone some new character. And uh, they're definitely an option for adding some style to your phone. Now, there's there's a couple more. Uh, one I do not have on hand because Tim has it for his review, and that's the JBL sound boost speaker and the jbl sound boost speaker is probably the only one i would necessarily recommend i think it runs about 70 or 80 dollars and it just slaps on the back and it's a full-blown speaker and it uh actually has a pretty decent sound for a speaker that attaches to the back of your phone so you may want to consider that uh if you really want to just ball out and go crazy this is the moto instashare projector it's a pico projector and basically you slap it on the back of the phone you then fire it up and uh, it then projects exactly what's on your screen to whatever wall you want it to project to. It is uh, 
it's a 480p resolution projector, not exactly the greatest resolution in the world. If you're trying to watch a movie with it or something like that, you're just not gonna get that much detail. It's not even HD, but it will last about an hour by itself and uh, does give you an option to project things. So uh, anyways, that is it. Those are the first 10 things you should do. I know this has been kind of a lengthier video than I was hoping, but there's a lot to talk about here. We wanna make sure you're getting the most out of this phone. So if you pick up Moto Z, Moto Z Force in the next week, Think about all this stuff. It'll hopefully help you get more out of your new phone. If you've got comments, questions, anything else, we're Droid Life. Peace.